One. Okay. Step one is to get the charcoal lit, and I learned this from Harry Sue. Since I have a side burner on my gas stove or gas grill, I just use this to heat up a couple of coals. Okay, that's a little too close. Let's see it going there. There you get some smoke. It's a little windy. It's uh, pretty warm out this morning already. It's only about 9:30. Here's my setup for how I'm going to smoke these sausages today. This is just a little pan that goes in. And I like to make sure the grates are this direction because I take my, uh, whatever this is, a slow and sear, I guess it's called. And it has a water pan. I won't be using a water pan today. But I leave it in there because it's a low and slow smoke. But the reason I like to do it this way is so ash can fall a little easier just a good habit to be in okay. this little barbecue dragon shelf it just sits on the sits on the grill like that just sit there fantastic today i'm just going to use some apple to uh smoke these sausages should only take about an hour hour and a half maybe uh just that i'm only doing a very very small amount some quick smoke today. All right, now let's come over here. We're going to put as much of these homemade sausages as we can. And that alone is worth the dragon shelf. Let's see, I think I gotta just pull them on here. All right, so this looks like a four. I'm trying to, sorry, not good at this. We're trying to do all this at the same time. I think this is just a twofer. Well, let's see if how well I can arrange these. I may have to cut. Actually, that might be smart. Let me cut those. Ow. Uh, just, we'll just go in there and cut these. Well, two and two. I think I should be able to I worry about cutting them, but we're going to do it. Let's see what happens. That one's almost not even twisted. Boy, that worries me. Oh, they're a little high. You can see 208, but I wanted to really get some hard smoke on that casing, lock that casing in. And uh, normally I would do these a lot lower. Uh, when I say a little high, I wanted to start about 150. And kind of slowly ramp up but these are really not that big uh, sausages as far as depth go they're gonna cook through pretty quick we're looking for an internal temperature of 155 which was down here currently we're down to or 218 we don't want to go too much higher than that actually want to kind of drop it but we'll see um, I've got it clamped down We've got some uh, I've got some high heat silicone I'm going to put around there all the vents are completely closed so that's just gonna because uh, I had the lid open a little too long but all the vents are closed down here is completely closed you'll see I made marks on my where they're open and that's completely closed down there so should starve some oxygen you should start seeing that temperature at 226 at 227 it's not going up very fast considering that's a live fire so it'll start coming down uh pretty soon because this is just the initial cook and you're and that's the this is the grill grate 
uh, temperature. That's the probe that's actually on the grill grate. And the reason it's 68 is because it's kind of nestled between uh, a couple of sausages. So that's the uh, temperature that's inside the grill. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. This is the grill grate temperature. This is what's in the meat. Pardon me. Uh, you'll see that's going to go up quick because uh, we don't want this to get above 250. And um, I actually like to get a little get a little lower. But you can see I've got a ton of leaks. I mean, I just do. I'm leaking from everywhere. But that's because there's a t that's because there is a ton of smoke coming out of these. I mean, it's I've got I just dumped a bunch of wood chips on there to really get that smoke going. And that may be too much, actually. Uh, but it's it's a windy day. It's actually a pretty hot day. It's going to get up to almost 99 degrees today. And it's supposed to rain like crazy. And we're getting our fence replaced in a couple of days. And our house resided and just had a tree taken down right here. It's a big, big tree over the patio. That's all going, so... Anyway, all right, let me get this stuff cleaned up because it's also supposed to rain. But you'll notice this temperature is not going crazy now. It's kind of settled down a little bit. Well, I might have spoken too soon. But uh, I'm pretty good. As long as we don't hit the 250 mark, I'm, I'm good. And uh, it will start coming down here. Uh, that, that, that smoke's going to go quick. Okay, you can see I've got my uh, remote unit here. I'm going to sit down and do some work at the computer. But uh, we're still, this is about five minutes later, and it has not gone up much, which is great. So we're starting to see that oxygen being sucked out of the griddle uh, or the kettle, and things start to slow down, which is what you want. You want to go low and slow. I put, probably should have uh, put get, get the meat situated first because I had that lid open way too long once I put the additional charcoal on there. Actually once I put the uh, wood chips on. So thunderstorms are absolutely supposed to be coming. And you'll see here that uh, I'm missing the rain so far, which is good. Okay, so we've hit a temperature of 155, which you'll see here. My remote unit as well. And uh, we'll go ahead and, uh, by the way, See that great temperature is 222, and it runs to almost 275 at the dome level. Let's get them out. What we got here? They look pretty good. Let's go ahead and take them off. All right, let's go drop these in some water. Here we go. Just gonna drop them in. Plan was to put them in. Uh, you can see our internal temperature of the house is 70 degrees. It's 91 outside on the patio right now. It's supposed to rain, but right now no rain, which is great. So once the uh, sausages cool down to basically 70, they're at room temp. I'll go ahead and take them out and, and uh, dry them off, and probably put one in the fridge. But probably going to try one. The, uh, the Nesco going here, our sealing system. We're going to go ahead and seal some of these up and probably put some in the freezer, probably put uh, some in the fridge. Got it tucked in. Try to I love about this Nesco is you can get a double seal. You see that? Double seal. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Well, we're going to package up just these three here. I'm going to eat this one today. Okay, we got it in. Let's go ahead and just do it. That looks pretty level. Down. We got the double seal. We're going to hit it. We got light pressure here. We could put high pressure, but that tends to suck some juice actually out of the meat. We don't want to do that. You can see the juice is flowing up here a little bit. 
And as soon as that goes down. All right. And there are our two packets. We're going to throw this in the freezer for a party. Should there ever be one post-COVID. Throw this in the refrigerator for me to munch on periodically. We're going to eat this one today. Someone did ask me about my bacon. It's actually time to flip it, so I'll go ahead and show you what I got going here. Simple pork belly. See this says? Just one of one, salt and brown sugar, nothing else in it. And I put that in in July 7th, and I turn it every other day. Still see some of that sugar in there, but this was vacuum packed tight. There was no juice in it, so this is coming out. And you can see it's kind of still a little bit flexible. It's got a couple more days. Probably let it go a little bit longer. So today we, we flip it. Now, the, there's a debate whether when you vacuum pack, if it's necessary to flip, it doesn't hurt, so I do it. There's no easy way for me to cut this and film, so I'm just going to try to cut a little piece here. This is not the I need to drag the knife. Can I do it one-handed? I don't think I can. There we go. Well, I'm using the... All right, so that's what we look like. Oh, I got a hole. Oh, that's where the probe was. Yeah, well, that's why there's a hole. Sorry, that's why there's a hole, because that's where the probe was. This is our... our Thermo. Obviously, I didn't get it in the dead center, uh, but I'm sure it went in fine. Certainly cooked, and the casing is edible, so let's give it a shot. Right there, when we start, I did just taste this. Uh, you're not going to watch me taste it, sorry. Oh, man. Very good. This got the flavor of summer sausage with the smoke. I didn't realize how much smoke made summer sausage. Because this sausage recipe is a country sausage. Not really a summer sausage recipe. In summer sausage, I put mustard seed and, um, and turmeric in it. Not turmeric. Marjoram. Uh, I didn't do that on this one. Uh, this is a country sausage. But, oh, man. That is good. It's just kind of, a, it's, you know, a summer sausage is more of a hard sausage, not quite a hard salami. It's certainly less than a hard salami, uh, softer than that. But uh, you, if you've ever had summer sausage, this is a little, and I mean very little, but a little softer in texture than the summer sausage. But you can still see I've got a number of chunks in there. And I'll pull it up closer here. You can see it. You can see those chunks. This is nothing but pork. I mean, pork and a little bit of spices. There is no MSG, no nitrites, no preservatives in this at all. So, uh, and it's interesting. I think those might be air spots from where the smoke, but as this cooked down, you can see that's where the smoke didn't get. Uh, and this is natural hog casing. So, it's good stuff. Pretty yummy. I don't know what that looks like. There we go. We'll try that. Here, is this a better way to do it? I'm not a camera person I, as far as videos and whatever, but that's it. We're gonna just see what this is doing. You can see we still got, I haven't cleaned up. This is all grease from making some smash burgers. And uh, so I thought, eh, but I didn't want to have the hamburger grease in here, so I cleaned out the pan. Just gonna get these hit. On induction, this is, uh, eight. man, that's, that looks really bad, doesn't it? It's on seven. So it'll be immaculate when I'm done. It is pretty funny that they almost all have vent holes from the probe. But, uh, we're just going to cook these a couple minutes and then eat them straight up. Maybe a little bit of uh, um, hard mustard. So this is it. You can see the steam coming off of it. Clearly, I need to clean this countertop, but I'm going to do that afterwards. Little bit of Inger Ingelhofer, just uh, stone ground mustard, and there's no flavoring. It's not spicy. It's just pure mustard, just like yellow mustard, but it's got the little pops of some whole mustard seed, which is absolutely fantastic. Oh yeah, one other thing: if you don't have mustard seed, this is what it looks like. I like the Spice Islands. Just got a new bottle, um, 
and it's it, it's great. It's just great. It's softer than pepper. Uh, hardly, uh, it just is really fantastic.